Hello class. In this video, we will be talking to a health science senior. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is C. Um, I'm a fifth year health science major with a business administration minor. Um, and I am graduating next spring. Yay. Almost done. Yes. Uh, what career are you interested in pursuing? Oh, so I am interested in a dual degree program. I'm actually interested in the physician assistant program and also public health. Awesome. So um, I know that you have been involved in a variety of things um, over the years here at Cal State Fullerton. Um, can you share a little bit about um, your involvement with um, nonprofits and kind of how your experience with them has um, kind of changed over the years or the different things that you've been involved in? Okay, so I was first exposed to OCAPICA, which stands for Orange County and Asian Pacific Islander. Yeah, Community, <laughs> Community Alliance. Alliance. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm actually interning for that program right now. I interned for their Well Necessity program, which is a mental health wellness program. And it focuses on workshops, support groups, um, counseling. They do outreach to the community. Um, so I was first exposed to a Capica about two years ago when I took a service learning course um, that led me to mentor high school students called, um, in a program called Happy Yep, which Ocapica, um, basically Happy Yep is under Ocapica. Um, and then a year later down the road after, um, one of their outreach and intervention specialists came to talk to us during a meeting um, advertising about well necessity. And that's when I started interning for well necessity as well. So as part of my intern uh, responsibilities, I go out into the community and I do outreach. So I would usually attend with an outreach and intervention specialist and we will either go to shopping plazas or we will attend health fairs, community fairs. And we usually have a table and we tell the community about the resources we offer. And also we're a county funded program. So all our services are free to the community. Um, we serve all types of uh, people. We don't ask for their income or for insurance or anything like that. Um, and then, yeah, well, I mean, I, I think that that covers it. It sounds like um, you, you've had the opportunity to work uh, or volunteer in a school setting, but also out in the community serving a variety of folks. How do you think um, that experience of being out in the community has um, kind of informed what you want to pursue as a career? Uh, okay, so I really enjoy working in the community because you kind of see hands on like what the community needs. I know you learn a lot about it through classes or like just reading about it in the newspaper or articles, but you really don't get a feel of, especially the community you live in, you don't really get a feel of what they need unless you're actually talking to them face to face. Because um, I've had instances where I'm talking to someone face to face and they're like, I'm homeless, like I need, mm. I need housing, which everyone knows, right? Like homelessness is a big issue, but you don't really feel it until you meet that person and you see like the situation they're in and like you hear their story and um, you kind of just try to help them navigate because a lot of the community members, they actually don't know these resources are available to them mm. and they don't know that it's free. So like mm. a lot of them, kind of just they're ashamed either to talk about it or to seek help because there's a huge stigma uh, regarding like homelessness, mental health issues. So I really enjoy that aspect of being able to help people navigate the system, um, navigate the resources that are available to them to better themselves. Um, and also, um, I know a lot of PA programs, they ask for, um, like some kind of community involvement. A lot of the PA programs are focused towards underserved communities. Mm -hmm. And I think working with nonprofits is a really big um, influence on whether you want to help that community or you want to work in that community in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really great experience working with nonprofits because in the future you can talk about those kind of experience and how it led you to working in underserved communities and how in the future you do want to work in those communities. Yeah, that's a that's a great response. And I'm glad that um, 
although you're not applying right now, you are already aware of what the schools are looking for. And so for everyone in the class, whether or not you are ready to apply for a program, you should be looking into what all the requirements are, what are the things that make an applicant um, desirable for that program. And definitely, I mean, we've, we've talked about it throughout this class, um, uh, working with underserved populations, right, whether that's um, the aging population or low-income communities or um, communities of color um, or, you know, communities that are um, immigrants or refugees, right, like these communities that um, uh, are not being served by, like, mainstream um, resources that are out there. So um, it's, it's important to know what um, opportunities um, you can get plugged into to align with those uh, grad school application requirements. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that I highly recommend you to do is to go to conferences or um, recruitment fairs held mm -hmm. by different colleges because I have to been like I have been to several of them and what they all have on their school website isn't always everything. Um, the recruiters will tell you. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the PA programs that I'm looking to apply to, the recruiter told me personally to work on um, building relationships with underserved communities because mm -hmm. that's a really good experience to write about because their school is specifically interested in people who would want to work in underserved communities in the future. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she definitely recommended me to do more of those experiences. That's awesome. So how do you find out about these conferences or um, opportunities to uh, go meet someone in person? So for conferences, usually I use a website called Eventbrite and I would usually just type in health conferences or mm. conferences happening in the area. There are a lot of uh, pre-health conferences too. So if you're undecided about your future profession, you can always go to those conferences and they have a variety of um, professions there, for example, nursing, PA, PT, OT, doctor, MD, o, um, uh, yeah, so they have a variety. Um, I know Mount Sac hosts one annually that mm. usually happens in, I think, May, and that one is a pre-health conference, so there's a variety of professions that show up. Um, there are more specific ones geared towards your profession, too, if you already know. Um, for example, I've been to a couple uh, PA conferences held by the graduate schools themselves. So um, MBKU is one of the ones that um, host PA conferences. Can you share what that stands for? Uh, MBKU stands for Marshall B. Ketchum University. Um, they are a health science focused university, so they focus on optometry and physician assistant. Yeah, and um, I know Western is also a really big health science school as well, and they do preview days, I think three times a semester. Mm -hmm. So usually they'll post it up on their website the next upcoming preview day, and you get to see all the graduate programs they have. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And mm -hmm. so um, you shared a couple of resources for folks who are still kind of exploring, as well as those who already know what they want to focus on. Um, I think this would be a nice segue to the Allied Health Student Association. Could you share a little bit about what the organization is, your role in it, and, you know, kind of how students can get involved? Yeah, so the Allied Health Student Association started about a year and a half ago, and I was one of the original co-founders along with several Allied Health Academy members. Um, I started off as the social chair for the club, so I would be planning social events for the members, um, a chance for them to relax outside of a school setting and connect with each other. Um, for this year, I am the president for LA Health Student Association. Um, we also have a social chair, professional chair, academic chair, conference chair, um, and secretary, and then a vice president as well and treasure. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have spots open, by the way, if you're interested in joining. Um, so then last year we planned our very first mental health conference. Um, we focused on issues regarding like students. So then um, I know a lot of times on campus, mental health is not really focused on or professors don't really understand 
um, issues surrounding mental health and like self care, especially for students. So we were hoping to host a conference that focused on um, self care for students, um, ways to practice self care. So we had like a yoga workshop mm -hmm. for um, students to participate in. And then all our workshops were student ran. So um, we also had like an art room where um, students would come in and de-stress and do art together. Um, we also had another one that talked about the stigma surrounding mental health mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so our second um, mental health conference is upcoming on March 9th, and we're also looking for volunteers. So if you're interested in helping to plan a mental health conference, feel free to reach out to me. Um, it is a really good experience to put on your applications, your resume, anything, because it shows um, really good leadership skills. And um, it's really, you know, good for the community, especially on campus. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think it's really exciting um, because this was a new organization. It's still relatively new. And during the mental health conference, um, that's also new. And, and it, it shows that if you see something that um, is missing in your community, whether it's here at Cal State Fullerton or your own um, communities, wherever you live or work or play, um, college is the opportunity for you to make something happen, mm -hmm. right? So it's a way to practice like, okay, these people need something and they're not getting it. What can we do with our resources to make it happen? Um, so yeah, with that, um, college is the opportunity for you to not only explore your community, but actually go out and actually do something that is um, uh, beneficial for your community. So um, do you have any other last minute tips for students as um, someone who's about to graduate and someone who has been involved both on campus and in the community over the past few years? Um, definitely. The internship is part of your um, health science requirements. So I definitely encourage you to pick something that you are interested in doing because you kind of get a hint of what you're going to be doing in the future. So, I mean, you know, like if you don't like what you're doing at your internship, then maybe it's time to choose another profession. So seriously, um, take advantage of that. Um, take advantage of all the resources on campus too, like the Career Center. They do mock interviews for you. So, you know, that's a really good uh, resource for graduate school um, to do interviews because a lot of the graduate programs do require interviews and a lot of them do um, multiple mini interviews nowadays so mm -hmm. they definitely have a lot of resources on that and you know just to get involved on campus like join a student organization even if it's just for fun you get to network with a lot of people and you know networking is the way to go especially in the health science community because like through networking with LI Health, um, like the coordinator and the program, I was able to secure another internship. So, yeah. Awesome, well, thank you. And congratulations on graduating thank this you. year. And um, good luck with everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.